Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this UV CPE 58G outdoor wireless point-to-point -point bridge. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So it says outdoor wireless CPE. CPE stands for customer premise equipment. So let's take a look at this. So here we have a user manual and here are the bridges or the access points. So you have two of these. One will act as the access point and the other will act as the station. So it came with two ethernet cables. They're just under three feet long. And here we have PoE injectors. So don't worry, I'll go over what all this stuff means. And then we got some large zip ties. There's four of these for attaching it to something outside. Okay, so I have all the pieces laid out here. So what you can use this for is connecting internet between two locations. So this runs on the five gigahertz Wi-Fi band. It's IP65 waterproof. This has a two kilometer working distance. So that's within line of sight with no obstructions. So that's kind of your max. Most applications are probably gonna be much shorter than that between like a house in a barn or a house in a shed. So this does have a 100 megabit wired speed. So 100 megabit should be plenty for streaming video, security cameras, things like that. Now if you're backing up to a remote building, that can be a little bit slower than if you had some gigabit link. But if it's not time sensitive, like if you have all night to do the backup transfer, this could work for you. So we're gonna have two different units. We have the master and the slave. So I'm going to show a typical setup you could use for this. Here I have an internet router. So my internet would go in here and then we have a little switch on the back. So into that switch, we'll connect one of the ethernet cables and that will go into the LAN port on one of these PoE injectors. So out of the PoE injector in the PoE port, we'll plug in another cable. Now this would typically be a long cable. So this might be in a utility room, a basement, a closet, and then this would be run to the outside of your house and that will go in here. So I need to open this up. My fingernail's not great, so I just use this little piece of metal here. So I can slide this open a little bit, pull this piece of metal and it should pop open. There we go. Get this one also. So here you have the long cable. This is going to go into the WAN port here. Like so. And this cable can go right through here and this cover can slide right back on but we'll leave that open for now. So this you would say place on the outside of your house. You'd use some sort of a pull, some sort of a mount. You could also screw into the house and use these little keyholes to put it on. There are many mounting options. An antenna mount, like for a outside antenna, would work very well for something like this. So that's going to beam the signal to this. On this one, we'll connect from the WAN port to the PoE on the PoE injector. This will get plugged in. Then the LAN port on this could connect to some device. It could connect to a security camera. It could connect to a computer. So I have a computer over here. I'll plug this in. And this would be a long cable too, potentially. Now, if you had a security camera right nearby this, you could plug right into it. You could plug this into a separate Wi-Fi router. So these would be pointing at each other. So the internet would come out of your router. It would go into this, beam it over to here, and then put it back on ethernet. So you can imagine this here, is being the same as one long ethernet cable. So this isn't my actual router here, but I do have some internet right here. So I'll plug this in. And now I'm going to go plug this into an outlet on the back of my bench. And then I'll plug this one in right here. So now these are both plugged in. So there is a switch over here that says H and C. You want to make sure your master says H and your slave is switched to C. And what I want to do is I want to press the reset button on both of them. So I'll do that. So it's a little tricky to see here. There we go, it says H044. This one says C044. So now this is set up in a master-slave configuration. So my laptop now has an IP address on my local network. I'll go to a speed test. This is running locally on my network. This is not internet speed. This is testing network speed. I'll hit start. And here we're getting right around 100 megabits per second, which is the interface speed on this. Now it's rare that you'd get exactly 100, so that's very close. So if we had this connected up to a house and we had this here connected up to a shed or a barn or a garage in the same fashion and had this laptop plugged in here, we'd be able to 
access the internet over this wireless bridge here. So I just wanted to go over this setup inside real quick. Now I'm going to do a similar setup outside so we can test this outside in the real world. Okay, so I have a little test setup set up here outside. So I have this board here. I just have it clamped to this fascia board and I have some screws in here and I slid these on top. And then I actually pulled a wire that's normally connected to a security camera, but I pulled it out and I plugged it in here. And inside the house that's plugged into the PoE injector, which is then plugged into my switch. So this is the house setup. So this is a little over 30 feet away. I had this plugged into the WAN side. And once you get this all set up, you'd want to replace the covers on these. That's hooked into the PoE injector. Out of the LAN is connected into my laptop. And I have that hooked into a portable power station. So this power station can tell me how much power this whole thing's drawing. And right now it's drawing one watt. And when I was testing it earlier, it got up to three watts when it was actually running. So if you have something like a solar setup in a shed or a garage, you could probably run this off that because it doesn't draw a lot of electricity. Now here I have my speed test, I'll run it. And I am plugged into ethernet. You can see here my Wi-Fi is not connected. So here we got just under 100 megabits per second up and download speed. So if I was in a garage and I wanted to watch some Netflix, YouTube, Amazon, this would easily handle a stream like that, amongst other things. Security cameras, no problem there either. So I do have a wire hooked into my laptop, but this can also act as a wireless hotspot. So by default, the hotspot's not connected on here. It is connected on the master, but it's not connected on the slave. If you read through the manual, it talks about how to set that up. So then I could just connect with my laptop wirelessly to this. So that can really extend your range a lot. So that's the UV wireless bridge. If you're looking to add internet to a remote building on a budget, this is a great option. It's nice that this comes with almost everything you need to set up a wireless bridge. The things you'd have to add to this would be a cable and then some sort of mount. And as I showed, you can mount this to a surface or you can strap it onto a pipe. Antenna mounts work great for this or you can rig something up. You could bend some conduit. You can get really creative with it. You just want to make sure it's secure. I found this to be super easy to set up. You just set the switches for H and C on there and turn it on and it syncs itself up. And I've just covered the basics in this video. If you read through the manual, there's some advanced features. And as I was mentioning, this has an access point on it on the master side, but you can enable the access point on the slave side too. So you could have this on your house, you could have this on your pool house, and then you could have the access point on here to have Wi-Fi near your pool house. So you don't have to have a separate access point. Aside from that, you can take that ethernet out and you can plug it into a computer. You can plug it into another switch. That switch could be hooked up to a series of security cameras. You could have a backup server. There are many options. There's countless uses for equipment like this. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.